Hi guys, welcome back to our Pagan Opinions and today we're on Hi guys, so today on our Pagan Hi guys, welcome back to Friday's Hell on our Pagan Opinions. Today we're gonna to be talking about spirit guides. Off, I'd just like to say that I'm really sorry that I didn't post last week. I had a video and I tried to upload it twice and it failed both times and you might think twice isn't very like many times to try but each time it was uploading for like eight hours and then it failed so it just got to the point where it was midnight and I was like fuck this. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry to the other hosts and I'm sorry to every all the viewers that I missed my slot but yeah. So this week's spirit guides is what we're talking about. Now um, me personally I have one spirit guide and it's an animal spirit guide and if you're wondering the difference between the two personally I don't think there is one. Um, they're just uh, an animal spirit guide is the same as a spirit guide it just forms in a different shape. Um, so the question of what spirit guides or spirit animals actually are though is everyone has a different opinion. Personally I think that my spirit guide is a former of my is a part of my higher self that comes to guide me. So it's part of me that I'm not aware of, if you understand. Some people like to say that they are um, angels. Other people say that they are um, relatives that have passed on, that have come to help them back. Now, that may be true, but personally for me, I don't have any relatives that have passed on who I was close to, who have tried to come back. Um, so for me, that doesn't apply, but I have not experienced that yet, so I cannot cross it off my chalkboard. Um, but yes, I have an animal spirit guide, and it's a panther. Um, now, uh, Charlie said that you're not meant to um, tell people what your spirit guide's name is, but I can't tell you even if I wanted to because I don't know what his name is. Uh, I know he's a he, but apart from that, oh, that's my phone dying. Um, apart from that, I've never had the urge to ask him what his name is and he's never brought it forth. So either my imagination isn't that creative or it's just not necessary in our current relationship. So that's cool. Um, and I'll, I, I think a problem people have is they don't know what their spirit guide are as in the same kind of problem that you have with familiars like you love your pet you want your pet to be your familiar and therefore your judgment is kind of cloudy whether you can make that decision whether they actually are your familiar or not because you want them to be so badly but you don't actually know well some people can say that with animal spirit guides or totem animals um you can say that your favorite animal like say my favorite animal was a dolphin and I'd be like, oh, well, therefore my spirit guide is a dolphin. It doesn't work like that, but then you can double question your, like, like, you know what I mean? Then you can confuse yourself and not know and you're like, is it? Or is it just because it's my, that's my phone turning off. <laughs> or is it just because I want it to be so badly? Now I had this, my spirit guide is a panther. Now I had this idea long before I ever looked into spirit guides and knew what they were. I just had this feeling that it was a panther and I had a panther tattoo, not for the reason of it being my spirit guide. And then when I came to discover it, I was like, is my spirit guide a panther or is it just because I want it to be? Or is it, I got the tattoo for different reasons. I have the tattoo because it was a time in my life where I was recovering from a lot of crap that I'd been through and I was feeling really empowered and I'd had some tattoos at the time that was going through a rough time which represented a fallen angel, which is how I felt at the time and what represented my stance on life. And then when I was coming out of it, I never ever regret the tattoos that I got because I they tell a story. They were a part of my life at that time. But then when I became all empowered and I felt strong and I felt like things were working out, I decided to get a panther tattoo because that's what it represented for me. And it was just, I, I, I woke up one morning and it, I just had panther in my head. I could see the tattoo I wanted. I'd not seen it anywhere. It was not like one of those ones with its fangs out and its claws out climbing up your arm or anything. It was like... It was a dead calm picture of a panther and I just had this image stuck in my head for weeks and I was like, I have to get this because this is what it feels, it just feels right. So I did and then later when I came to, uh, came to discovering spirit animals and spirit guides, I was like, oh, I kind of, I did a few meditations and a panther was coming to me and I was like, uh, is this just because I've got a panther tattoo and panthers represent stability and stableness and strength and all the things that I want in a spirit guide and I was like is my judgment clouding what I 
what I think. And I, I remember so clearly the very first time I spoke to my spirit guide and I knew for sure that it was a panther and that he was my spirit guide. We were in, I was in like a meditation. It wasn't a guided meditation. I was just away with the wind. I was, I was in a jungle. I can picture it so clearly. I can see the moonlight. It was, it was like a little opening in a really, really thick jungle. And I was walking and I wasn't scared, but I could feel a presence moving in the trees at the side of me. And I kind of had a feeling that it was my spirit guide. And then he just walked out, dead like, dead prowling, dead casual. And he went, we've never spoken before. Not quite in that voice, in a deeper, calmer voice, but kind of with an edge of, hi. I don't know, like an edge of sarcasm, kind of, but not quite. And it, that's what he said. He said, we've never spoken before. <laughs> and it was, But it felt like we knew each other and it was dead weird. So... I just, I remember that so clearly and it's when I went, okay, my, it is, it's not just me. It may have been me influencing it, I don't know how the whole thing works, but yeah, so my spirit guide is a panther. Um, I think that's kind of a cute story to go with it, so yeah, I only have the one and we communicate. I've never had anything, you get some strange people that are like, oh yeah, I see my spirit guide, it's sat next to me right now, hi spirit guide, you know, I never ever have seen spirit guide in real life and when I say real life I mean the logical present here and now in my room um, the same way I can see the camera you know what I mean but um, I communicate with my spirit guide in dreams and in meditation and sometimes you know when you just get a feeling when you're just like I shouldn't step out into the road right now and then a police car drives past at a million miles an hour not that I've had that situation but you know that kind of feeling where you're just like oh I shouldn't do that. I kind of feel that that's his presence and he's a really strong masculine presence that's kind of protecting and guiding. Now, the fact that I have a tattoo and I got this beforehand, I just had this really solid image of a panther in my head. Um, it's, I know my spirit guide's male and I've always really known that. It's just, you know, you can just feel it. Well, when you look at my tattoo, it looks like a female to me. It's definitely female. And because I think that spirit guides are a part of our higher self, I think it's kind of fitting that my, my representation is female because that represents me. My spirit guide is male and it kind of makes up the other half, but I kind of have a symbolic picture of me in my heightened state which I think is really cool and it's even cooler that it, my tattoo has a story but then afterwards it's kind of one of those weird is it chance or are you just making it up and you know what I don't know and I don't care because it works for me just fine so I may have a very creative imagination but I love meditation it is awesome but yes I only have the one none no other ones have come to me apart from when I was doing my blue moon ritual the other week um I had I was doing it and I heard a cricket noise as if it was in the room with me it was really clear it was like a a weird croaking noise not like a frog like a cricket <laughs> and I was like what was that thinking am I sat on a piece of paper or am I knocking something or are the cats in the room is it something creaking and I was holding it because I always wear the same bracelets and they're kind of dangly I was holding them just in case you know like I, I can't make the noise, you won't be able to hear it, but you know when, when beads rub against chains and stuff, it makes that kind of scratchy noise, I was like, is it that? And and it happened three times, um, and I was like, what is that? And I thought, oh, is a spirit guide going to come forth and it going to be a cricket? But I, I didn't, nothing else came of it, so I don't know if that means something. I've not actually gone to look into it, or like what crickets represent or what they mean or what hearing them when they aren't there means. Um, but yeah, if any of you guys know, please comment and theories, like spout ideas at me if you've got any. Um, but yeah, so that's all I've got to say on my experiences with Spirit Guides. So I hope this has given you some insight, maybe to distinguish between yours. It's okay if your favourite animal turns out to be your spirit guide, but don't let it give it enough time, do enough meditations to know that you're not influencing it. I mean, you're always influencing it, but you know what I mean? That you're not just jumping to conclusions like, oh, I love monkeys, so monkey is my spirit guide. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's all I've got to say, and I'll see you next week. Bye.